Hello, this video is about the letters of 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus. Let me share my screen. Okay, 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus, sometimes called the pastoral epistles because Paul writes to these two individuals and gives them instructions about how to uh, run an early church. So Paul is the author of these letters to Timothy and Titus. However, unlike most of the others that we've discussed, this is really highly disputed. Now, so much so that the consensus, at least of the secular scholars, is that Paul was not the author. And I, I believe that Paul was the author. Let me just briefly mention the two main arguments which are offered against Paul being the author. Uh, the first one is the argument is that the church structure that's depicted in these letters is pretty well developed. The idea is that the church was initially very organic, didn't have a lot of structure, but in uh, Timothy and Titus, you have elders and deacons. But I just, I can't credit that argument much at all. Structure can be developed very quickly. Even in the early church, we know that in Acts 6, they came up with the, uh, the deacons in Acts 6. And really, the only two church offices that are described in Timothy and Titus are, are elders and deacons. So the idea that you very early, I can imagine you would want to have someone who's a leader in the church. So you have elders and you have deacons. So I, I don't really credit that argument much at all. There's also cases made that there are uh, differences in language between the earlier letters of Paul and these. But I don't credit that argument very much either for a couple of reasons. First of all, Paul used a, a person who would write for him, and that was one, one thing that could be different between one letter of Paul and another. But also, these are different types of letters. The other letters were all letters to churches, so they were a letter written to a large group of people. These are really private letters from one individual to another, and with different subject matter. So it shouldn't be too surprising that the language is a little different. And yet even saying that, it's sometimes not as different as you might think. I'll try to point out an example in a minute. And finally, if the letters were not written by Paul, they would be fraudulent. Now, I know that uh, there are some individuals who say that it was pretty common to have a book or something purportedly written by somebody famous back then when it wasn't really. But this really goes beyond that. Uh, let me show you what I mean. First of all, in each of the three, this is 1 Timothy, and it says Paul at the beginning. And 2 Timothy starts also by saying Paul. And Titus also starts by saying Paul. So they're all ascribed to Paul. But it's not just that it has his name on the beginning. It has, in these letters, a great deal of personal information. Like, look at this one. This is in 2 Timothy. It says, do your best to come to me soon. For Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all, the parchments. So it's, you know, if this wasn't really Paul writing this, then this is a very deep and subtle effort at deception. And I don't think you could credit the book any at all if you thought it was written by a Christian pretending to be Paul, yet showing such I mean, this is devious deception. So you have to either agree that the book was written by Paul or you have to throw it away. I agree that it was written by Paul. Um, and another example in Titus, he says, when I send Artemis or Tychicus to you, do your best to come to me at Nicopolis for I've decided to spend the winter there. Just an example of some of the personal things that Paul says in these letters. 
So as far as dating these letters, let me show you where I'm going. On, I think most of the other first and second books in the New Testament, we have the date very close together of the times that they were written. But on first and second Timothy, I've got them actually separated by a fair amount so that first Timothy is in 56 AD and second Timothy is about seven years later. So a long time in between these letters. It doesn't mean those are the only times that Paul wrote to Timothy. It's just those are the only letters that we have in the New Testament and Titus in the year 57. So to talk about why, uh, I'll go to, let's talk about 2 Timothy first. I've got him as the very last letter that Paul wrote that we have in the New Testament. First of all, Paul is in prison. It says in 2 Timothy 1.8, therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. So Paul is a, this is one of the letters which he wrote in prison. But unlike some of the others where he seemed to be doing okay, now he's been in prison for a while and it's not going very well anymore. Uh, Second Timothy ends with this word, at my first offense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. So Paul has now apparently had a hearing. Doesn't sound like it went very well. And then uh, we have this passage, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who loved his appearing. And it goes on with the passage, which we read a little bit earlier. But that really makes it sound like Paul believes that the end is very close for him. He, he's looking at the point of, that he's at as toward the very end of his life. And so I have that at about 63 AD after he's been in prison in Rome for some time and uh, things are not going too well. Some people may put this even a little bit later still being written by Paul with the idea that there, there is some tradition that Paul might have actually been released initially from Rome, then gone on to Spain and then came back to Rome and then got put in prison again. Uh, but in any case, whichever one you take, I think this comes at the end of Paul's life. Now, 1 Timothy is really different. Paul is apparently not in prison. The events described in 1 Timothy come from Paul's third missionary journey before he even got imprisoned in uh, Caesarea. Like it says here, he says, as I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain at Ephesus so that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine. Uh, these are things that happened during the third missionary journey. And when he writes this, Timothy is young. He says, let no one despise you for your youth. So we don't know quite how old he is, but the idea that he's young here tends to push the date up to an earlier period of time. And Titus, the events are also set toward the end of the third missionary journey. He says, when I send Artemis or Tychicus to you, do your best to come to me in Nicopolis, for I have decided to spend the winter there. So this is in places in Greece where Paul has decided to spend the winter. That's his third missionary journey. By this time, he also has known Apollos, and he mentions that he left Titus in Crete, in Crete, all things that are in the third missionary journey. So my conclusion is that I've got 1 Timothy in the third missionary journey about 56, Titus 57, and 2 Timothy is last of all when Paul is in prison around about 63, or it may even be a bit later than that. So that's the story I have for the pastoral epistles. Thank you for watching and I hope to be back soon with another video.